Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jim Moran. Today we're going to try to figure out what in the world is Against the Storm. It is developed by Aramide Games and published by Hooded Heroes. Hooded Heroes also published Terra Invictus and Old World. I haven't played either of those games, but they seem to not be doing as good as this game, which is overwhelmingly positive on Steam. Uh, it has a pretty good track record of uh, releasing updates on the roadmap and hit early access on November 1st, 2022. This is going to be hopefully a quick one. I really like this game. I really want to see it succeed, and hopefully it does so as well. First of all, we're going to look at the options here. There's a few uh, things that you can change. Obviously, you can do the resolution, uh, screen mode, graphics quality, uh, V-Sync, maximum FPS, and so forth. It's pretty nice. You got an FPS counter. I have my uh, NVIDIA overlay right now, so I'm going to not enable that. But it's been running uh, pretty good. Uh, 130 FPS at least. I'm pretty much maxed out. Motion blur, depth of field. I don't know why you would have motion blur in a game like this, like a, a city builder game. But hey, here it is, and we have it. You got screen fog, uh, you got lighting flashes, depth of field, chromatic aberration, all that stuff. Those are turned uh, toggleable, which is really, really good. I want to praise the developers for that. Good job there. World map grid, master volume. You got you know all the sound uh, separate sound sliders for all the settings on the on the sound, which is good. You got master volume, effects volume, music volume, ambient volume, intro volume, and mute in background if you alt tab often you got some control options that you can do uh, i i have the wasad keys as my directional keys you got some gameplay things that you can look at it's pretty much going to be tailored to your experience if you want to change that uh i pretty much kind of left everything on um on default you got some alerts here and then you got some key bindings as you can see these are my key bindings here i'm going to exit out of that and i'm going to play uh, I'm going to continue my game, I'm going to give a little bit of an, a brief overview of what this game is and why I think that it, it definitely needs a lot more help, a lot more development that it's getting right now. So, this is the main castle, this is where the queen resides, and your job is to pretty much set up uh, uh, outposts and develop them, kind of like a, it's like a mini... A mini city builder you complete that the goals there you're done and then you move on to the next one and you have to build i believe five or six of them until the the the, the storm comes basically and you just have to protect the city and make sure that uh, nothing happens which is pretty pretty easy to do there's a little bit of rng while you while you play the game, uh, and I'm gonna get to that when the game starts. You have a few different biomes that each add uh, a level of difficulty or alter the game in a way that you're gonna have to adapt a little bit. So you have the main one, which is the Royal Woodlands. It gives a lot more wood. You have the Coral Forest, which has some other things as far as the missions are concerned. You have the Marshlands, and you have the Scarlet Orchid, Orchid, uh, whichever way you would say that. Orchard, <laughs> English is a second language, uh, and that adds a few a few uh, things as well. So that bread-looking icon, it's not a bread icon. It's uh, it could be bread, but it's it's coins basically. It's the currency that you use in the game. As you can see, I have a hundred, and it's it's yeah. The, the the bread is pretty much the currency of the game. You have food stockpiles. I have one hundred and ten. You use those in order to upgrade your camp. So if you go to the smoldering city here. You're going to see the buy upgrades option. I've bought a few upgrades, but I kind of stopped because they're getting a little bit more expensive. And I'm kind of saving them to see so I can explore the rest of them here and see which path I want to get to. Uh, you got your deeds here. It's pretty much uh, achievements that you can do in the game. They give you a little bit more boost. Some of them do, actually. Not all of them do. And you got some uh, options here that I haven't actually unlocked because I haven't uh, done the upgrades on the Smoldering City. So... That's what your main castle looks like. You're actually never going to see that. And then you kind of have to choose between the visible map what where you want to start your next adventure at. So I'm going to start it. I want to start it here. Uh, but as you can see, because it, the, the, the hexagons um, overlap with my previous ones, I'm not going to be getting any food stockpiles for, for those overlapping. But if you go here, as you can see, I'm, I'm going to be in the coral forest. 
which is going to be fine. I think I'm just going to do that. I'm going to head towards this question mark. The question marks here are pretty much these uh, buildings that you can see. They give a few uh, bonuses. So this one is a watchtower. The Royal Guard is watching over this region. Discovering glades doesn't increase hostility, which which is nice. That's the bonus that this gives you. I believe it also gives you uh, more more bread, more food stockpiles. Yeah, because the, the, the standard one is 14, and I go here, it's going to be 15. It's going to be 13 if I if I explore in the woodlands. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to start this. Um, you can embark with a certain amount of uh, villagers uh, and you can select a race as well. As well as the embarkation bonuses, which is going to be resources that you start the game with. I tend to kind of diversify my villagers. I don't like to keep it in one. So the humans are actually pretty good at gathering food and whatnot. There's going to be several activities that each race excels at and also is happy doing, which is important for the morale of, of your people. And that's all going to be evident here soon. These are going to be the starting resources here. You got your summary and you got your modifiers. There's going to be a bad modifier, a good a two good modifiers. We'll see what those are when the game starts. And I usually like to start with my stone, my clay and some food. This is your uh, embarkation points left to spend. You can increase that uh, by upgrading your smoldering city. And each resource takes uh, a certain amount of that of that so that you can not cheat and basically uh, make it a lot easier on you or you don't have to you don't have to pick any of that so we're going to embark on the bottom there you can change the difficulty i have it on the easiest one for the purposes of these videos and here we are so we got the watchtower we got the diverse flora biome effect vegetation here mutates into unique strands each type of tree provides distinct bonus resources this is a really good one uh, and this one is uh, biome effect the forest is as scary as is beautiful. Villagers have a 5% chance of earning bonus yields from production and gathering for each uh, hostility level. And then you got to settle as luck. Villagers have a 35% chance of not consuming food during the break, which is good. But uh, the game becomes a little bit predictable after the 9 hours that I've put into it. So that's not going to be too much of an issue. And these are your... Your modifier, your negative and positive modifiers here. I'm gonna close that. The game starts paused and everything, which is really nice. So this is how this game works. You have the new buildings that you can choose from. You can choose um, one of three buildings. So this is the RNG level that I, the RNG, the RNG element that I was talking about in the beginning of the video. You can choose between the carpenter, the weaver, and the lumber mill. If you look above the icon when you're hovering with your cursor, you're gonna see the current best. And then you're going to see what uh, it produces. So the carpenter produces planks, simple tools, and pack of luxury goods. And can use storm water. As the game evolves, uh, a few things are added into the game. So uh, last time I played, the storm water use was not there. And it's been, it's been about a month since I played this game. And uh, now I'm finally able to make a video on it. The Weaver makes fabric very well and very bad training gear and a uh, pack of trade goods. And then this guy makes really good planks, which are important at the beginning of the game. You got scrolls and you got pack of trade goods as well. Um, here's the thing with this one. Normally, I'd say the lumber mill is going to be more important because you need the planks early in the beginning of the game. But I'm going to go with the carpenter because you do need simple tools and you do need pack of luxury goods for all the missions that you're going to have to do. So we're going to do the carpenter. You have three options at the beginning when you start the game. Uh, you have a trapper's camp, small farm, and forager's camp. What I didn't look for here is the... So right here we have a broccoli patch. So we're not going to do the trapper's camp for now, but we are going to have to do the small farm. Or the foragers camp the small farm needs fields in order to produce crops so we don't have the fields anymore uh, yet we're gonna have to explore them by cutting through the trees and, and going into these areas here uh, so we are going to pick the foragers camp so that we can pick up that broccoli 
And uh, for the last one, you have Druid's Hut, which is the house preference for the Dwarf. You have a Brewery and you have a Smithy. We do need coats, but we don't have... Uh, does... I don't think we can do... Yeah, we don't have... The Carpenter cannot do um, uh, the, the cloth, so we're going to have to choose... We're going to do the smithy for now regardless, uh, because it can do coats and it can do simple tools, but see, that's the other thing. Right now, we don't have any production of coats and pack of trade goods, but we do have simple tool creation. And the druid hut, I'm not really, I've never really worried about making these, you know, for each race, but uh, we're just going to do the smithy for now and, and move past that. The way it's always advised to start the game is by going to the woodcutter's camp and putting down two of them. You got one, and then you got two. So then you click this, and <clears throat> you have to assign each person after it's built. I like to do a path from and to the camps. Oh, path. Here we go. From the main main area here, do it around just because it gives a little bit more of a walking boost to all your people. Gonna do another camp here. We're gonna do foragers camp, and I'm actually gonna put it so close between the food and the warehouse here. The warehouse cannot be moved, so keep that in mind. And this also cannot be moved. And we're gonna start the game. Nothing else. Oh, there is a quarry. So let's see. Stone cutters. Yep, we're gonna put the stone cutter here. As you can see, my guys are starting to build this, which is nice. Oh, my Ubisoft logged me out. That's unfortunate. So I'm gonna turn off my screen overlay here because I want to see the quests that I get. How do we get the quests, you ask? Well, you're gonna have to wait. So once the building is built, you have to assign people to it. Now, normally the 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 druids are. Actually, it's not the it's it's the beavers. It's the druids, the humans, the lizards, and the beavers. The beavers are actually very excellent in collecting wood, and they do collect some bonus. But for now, we're gonna put the lizards on wood duty, and that's gonna leave us one human for um, for these. Uh, I believe the lizards like to collect stone. They're gonna be a good stone cutter. Once all your villagers go into their jobs, uh, that leaves nobody to build buildings. So keep in mind, this is not one of those games where it automatically reassigns people in order to build the buildings. And we're going to start collecting wood. Now we're going to pause and we're going to hit F because that's what the hotkey is to select which part of the forest you want your woodcutters to, to cut down. And that's a really important thing to keep in mind on because... I thought that, hey, what's what happens when I, this is the area here, what happens when they're done cutting down all that wood? Well, you can actually move the building. This is really nice. Uh, you can move pretty much every building except the main ones like the warehouse and um, and your main, your main hearth is what it's called. This is the ancient hearth here. You can assign a villager there and it's going to give you a little bit of a of a boost on some things so when you assign lizard it keeps uh, it adds a plus one global resolve this is the satisfaction of your people and if you hover over here for each race you can only play with three races per game you cannot have all four races so right now we're going to struggle a little bit with collecting wood but that's okay this will show you what each person needs in order to be happy so this one needs shelter they all need shelter they all gain a little bit of a bonus from their specialized housing. Uh, both of these need jerky, biscuits, and all that stuff. As you can see, you can refine a lot of the resources into uh, more more refined outputs so that they give a little bit more of a bonus, which, which is nice. Uh, the front of the building or the back of the building, it doesn't really matter. You can just do whatever you want. And we do not have um, any planks. So I just laid down the houses here. I'm kind of going fast because I, I remember how to play this game. So you have this here. This is the cornerstone. These are bonuses that you get throughout the game. Every time a year completes, you get a bonus. So this one, plus two to stone production. Gain additional stone for every yield from gathering farming or production. This is going to give me a really big boost on my, on my stone production, which is really good. Well-rested workers. Just the right amount of villagers with a leisure 
need uh, fulfilled have a plus 20% chance of doubling their yields. So the leisure bonuses will come way later in the game when, when you have more of an empire belt up. So we're going to do the stone for now. And these are the orders. Let's see what we got here. Uh, clearing glades and the clan. So these are the objectives. We need 10 resort for lizards for more than 30 seconds we're currently at seven and it is increasing so we might pick this this will give us two lizards pack of meat and parts parts are needed to upgrade things and this one complete any one glade event so this means if we dig into the woods and we unlock this or this if there's an event here uh, or if we go into a dangerous glade then uh, that will give us the bonus for now i'm gonna do this because it seems a little bit easier Let's pick another one. Uh, humans, 20 or above resolve. They It seems to be going up, but this one has a forager. Um, this one's going to be a little more feasible, but this will give us more humans, and we do need more humans. This will also give us two newcomers, and it's going to be random people. So we're going to do this one. You don't have to really think about these early ones. They're kind of easy. And then this one gives us 35. We have to collect 35 wood. This is the shorter thing, so we're going to do that one. Every, I believe... 12 or so minutes 15 minutes uh, 13 minutes uh, you get new unlocks which which is good that's the shelter hopefully it's gonna be built soon but I don't think so I do have to put my human there so that they can start uh, collecting that so we can do the the, the stuff uh, we're gonna collect that we got some more people in I believe maybe yes we did we got some more lizards and we can pick a new building every time you do a new order and every time you complete it you're going to be able to uh unlock a new building so we got the provisioner smokehouse and scribe provisioner um none of these are useful right now but i'm going to do the smokehouse because we do need jerky for these jerks and this needs wood we don't have any wood so we're just waiting for these guys to complete it so as you can see there's a circle going around here uh, that means that this this faction is um, producing more of this of this resource because that's their specialization. So if you click here, you're gonna see uh, they really enjoy brewing. So activities that have to do with beer and stuff, and they are good at farming. So anything that has to do with farming is gonna be uh, beneficial to humans. And then the lizards, uh, they. Uh, very good with meat and production, and uh, they like warm environments. So let's put the lizard here. I was wrong, actually. It's not the lizard that likes that. So we need 35 wood to get two more people, and they're going to start building this by that time. Actually, no, because we need planks. So let's go down here. we got the crude workstation, and we got the carpenter. We're going to build a carpenter somewhere here. And these guys are going to be these guys are going to be uh, continuing to collect the wood. We need a small. Tr Every time you want to, you're wondering what can collect the um, the resource that that you're seeing. Just click on it, and it will show you uh, trappers camp and small trappers camp. Small trappers camp is a little bit less efficient than the trappers camp, but it's one of the starting buildings. It shows you that I've built zero of them. Uh, there's no point in doing that right now. And the bigger one, you kind of have to unlock it with, with a reward here. So what's this bar down here? Well, this is your reputation, and this is the uh, the Queen's Impatience. Now, the more it takes for you to co to complete the missions, the, the more impatient the Queen is going to get. And as this rises, the forest's hostility goes down. The more angry the Queen is, the less hostile the 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 forest is i don't really know exactly why but that is how that works uh doesn't make too much sense to me but we're gonna move this guy here and he's gonna keep cutting these down there we go so we got the wood in we collected that we got some more humans which is brilliant hopefully uh they build this um oh shit the carpenter needs actual planks i forgot about that so what we're going to have to do is build a crude workstation. I'm going to put it down here. 
and unlock a building because we completed a quest. Man, these suck too. We got the bakery, we got the artesian, and we got the rain. We're gonna do the artesian because pigment does come, uh, does become necessary later on in the game. So this is pretty much the game. Um, you have to wait a few minutes. You have to complete the uh, the quests uh, in a timely manner before the queen gets pissed off. And as you complete them, you get uh, more reputation. And as you get more reputation, you can unlock new uh, blueprints. As well as completing the, uh, the the quest will give you a new blueprint. Let's see. Who can we put? The oh, we do have... Uh, that's cool. So we can actually boot this guy here, put the, the beaver there, and then I can actually put this guy there. So that's pretty cool. Crude workstation. No bonuses here. That's a little bit unfortunate. And then this, this screen kind of messed me up a little bit when I started playing this game because I was like, what is going on? Pipes is also a new uh, thing that they added with the updates here. So we want to do planks, and we want to set a limit to 10 of them. Actually, let's do a limit of of uh, 5, because that's how many we need to build this thing right here. So once we build the carpenter, we're going to add the priority there. Uh, act, we need weave, too. So we're going to do... How much fabric does he need? He needs 2 fabric. So we're going to do the fabric as well. Let's limit that to 10, because there's no other production. This is the screen where you limit what resources get produced uh, where so you can choose between what resources used to create that uh, uh, that resource you cannot change the wood wood always is required for the planks and for the bricks you can actually also use stone we're gonna save our clay for something else we're gonna have a lot of stone coming in and I actually want 10 limit there when that is all said and done, they're going to stop the production. You can also hit the priority on these. I want to do 2, 1, and 0. It's going to be a little bit more important to get the wood planks out. Because that's what's going to be required for uh, for the shelters here. I, I do need to build the shelter sometime soon. Because I don't want these guys to get pissy at me. I want to put this guy here so he can start working as well. And this is the 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 or the forest's uh, anger here, so you can see uh, this is the level of the anger that it's reached and where it's at right now. Every hundred points, it goes up. You kind of have to keep everything in order. You have to keep the queen satisfied by completing the missions, but you also have to kind of go at a pace that doesn't anger the forest because the forest gets angry the more trees you cut down, so that might make it a little bit more challenging for you. So right now we unlock this uh, this glade here. We have some uh, broodmother that's that's gonna produce some meat and some leather possibly, 20% chance of leather. And then I believe this is coal right here, but I can't actually click it, which is weird. But uh, yes, that, that that's probably coal. And coal can be mined, of course, with the stone hunters camp. Actually, that's not coal. I don't know what that is, but um, that's weird. I know that that's not coal because when you click the building, as you may notice, it shows you these. It shows you these on the edge of the screen as well. So it kind of tells you, hey, if you want to mine that, you're going to have to move this building here. So this is, this needs a trapper's camp and this needs a trapper's camp. So when you go here and you try to build a trapper's camp, bam, it shows you the shrimp or the insects and then it shows you this right here so I'm gonna I'm gonna put that down here for uh, that doesn't seem to be anything unless it's something that with the update that was added later on I'm not quite sure eventually you're gonna be able to build more uh, hearths as you progress through the jungle it does get cold so your people do need the warmth and I'm not ready to do a dangerous glade yet so I'm gonna bring my woodcutters here and I'm gonna start cutting into all of this stuff here so I can get some more wood. I'm gonna wait until uh, I'm, I have a little, few more people that I can sacrifice for the glade. Now there is the forbidden glade as well which as you can imagine when you cut through a dangerous glade that pisses off the forest a little bit but 
When you cut through the Forbidden Glade, that pisses the forest off even more, and even the crown uh, tells you, hey, you probably shouldn't fuck with this one. Uh, but obviously, you know, you kind of have to. What are you going to do? My lizard's resolve is going down because they don't have any shelter. Uh, but I, I don't have any... Do I have any planks here? Let's see. I do not have planks. I do have planks. All right, so I am going to say, okay, well, you stop cutting that. And let's start building some buildings so that we can have some shelter because these guys need shelter. Uh, that's going to give us three resolve. Hopefully that happens soon. And you do need to build more hearths because they uh, they allow you to get more uh, satisfaction from your people. As you can see, a cycle was completed. I have newcomers. You can choose newcomers every cycle. Amber is uh, your currency. It's kind of what you use to trade with the mar with the traders that come through if you uh, build the building. This gives me two uh, beavers and one lizard. Less lizards, good, because the, they're really hard to please. And more beavers is good because it cut through wood easier. I, I don't need I don't need this. I don't need the roots or the mushrooms. So we're gonna accept that. And then you have a new cornerstone, which is rebellious spirit. Uh, <clears throat> the people are feeling oddly rebellious. Gain plus one global resolve for every two impatience points. This comes in handy. Uh, relatives of your village will send gifts for treating their family members well. Get 40 water skins for every full reputation points obtained through high resolve. This is great. This is really great, but we're never going to be at that high resolve. Uh, this is a really high thing to aim for, but it's going to get in the way, so we're going to pick that one. And then we don't have any more missions yet. It's going to be two minutes. Here we go. And hopefully we're going to build these houses soon. And that's going to that's going to be that. That is essentially the game. I've pretty much covered everything. I I played about 9 to 10 hours back to back of this game. I was pretty much obsessed with. It. I was going I was doing game by game by game. Uh, but I was a little bit disappointed to find out that after you build your sixth settlement, the storm comes and it pretty much raises everything down. And you no longer have those six settlements. So it kind of resets the whole game. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm missing something here. Uh, but that's that's kind of what happens. I I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I Hopefully I'm not doing something wrong. Hopefully there's not something that I haven't actually not figured out. But uh, that's, that's definitely something that I need to look into a little bit more. And see why, why does the game just reset. Because if it just resets like that, that's, you know, uh, it, it shows to me that it's missing a little bit of an endgame um, component to it. So, besides that, this is a, a really unique base builder. I I really do like it. It's The performance is good, the graphics are great, the music is great. Um, this is one of the few base builders that I've played that I actually don't mute it and have something playing on the background. I... Nothing is offensive here. The music is not offensive. It's actually tolerable. It's uh, it's a unique concept. The RNG does contribute to the uniqueness of the game, but uh, it's so early on at this point that, like I said, in about five hours, you will have seen uh, everything that the game has to offer, and you kind of put it down for a while, and you just wait for for more stuff to come through the the pipeline, which they have, and I'm actually quite uh, ecstatic to to see what else the game has to offer. Objective, we go through a dangerous glade and we get a bunch of stuff. This one, we have to do a pack of provisions and a pack of trade goods for... Um, gain one production yields for all packing goods. I, I'm i going to go this one. This is a little bit easier. Let's see. Coal. Uh, efficient fuel obtained by mine brick... By mine brick oven or killing... Brick oven is, is I think, a new... Uh, roots. Oh, this one. This wildfire essence is what you need, by the way, to uh, to build a new hearth. I'm gonna do this one. I'm gonna do the roots. So why not? The trees, I believe, uh, drop roots. If I can actually click on. Nope. Yeah, here we go. No. I think it depends on the. Le yeah, it depends on the tree. This one might give you. Uh, Rain and God. That's that's pretty good. 
All right, well, I want to wrap this up. It, it's this. Some of you might be surprised, but this has been um, a while since I uploaded this channel, uh, let alone a a game a game coverage uh, type deal. It's because uh, when Ian came, our house flooded, and uh, that was a little bit of a uh, shit show. Uh, literally, it was um, it was pretty painful. Uh, we pretty much lost everything, and uh, we kind of had to start from scratch, which is not ideal. But what are you gonna do? You know, just kind of keep going. So we just finally moved back into the house, and we are able to pretty much go back, start going back to normal. That's all you can do. So I want to start doing a few more videos. I want to get back into making videos. I want to have a, a regular upload schedule where I can just start uploading again and hopefully hopefully get back on track with, um, with all my uploads. But that being said, this has been Against the Storm. Once again, it is developed by Aramide Games and published by Hooded Heroes. I believe it's $10 or $20 on Steam or your regional equivalent. Hope to see you next time.